Hi, everybody. Recruiting Anima here on October 12th, 2022. Okay. Look, I'll just say it again. If I ever get the year wrong again, if I say it's 2024, somebody tell me, okay? Uh, okay, Mario, can I have a commitment from you? Sure, if sure, I sure. say the wrong year, you tell me. <laughs> Okay, sure. Mario the Recruiter dot com. Yo. I want to sound like Oprah. Mario the Recruiter <laughs> dot com. Okay, I just can't give away the stuff that Oprah gives away. Come Ivan Gulenko. Ivan Gulenko. He's here too, but now you know he told us he's going to be the shadow. He doesn't like to show his face because he's busy working. It's stupid. Okay, but I will do his ad anyway. Ivan is an IT recruiter in Switzerland, and he is so uh, such a genius, let me put it that way, that he's got time on his hands, and he has created his own applicant tracking system. It's called Clang, K-L-A-N-G dot S-O. Hey, hey, am I obnoxious or what? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah, that's what you animal. get. That's what you get, Ivan, for coming on the show and refusing to show your face week after week, okay? Even after <laughs> I told you it's okay. And here we have number 11, Rich Rosen. <laughs> CornerstoneSearch.com, our hero. <laughs> can't stop shouting. Amen, Rich. Um, man, oh, man. It's, yeah. good. it's good to be in your presence again. We hereby salute yes. you. Uh, yes. You guys are the best. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, anybody got something they want to say before I start talking? No. Rich, do you have anything you want to argue about? Do I have anything I want to argue about? No, man. I, I just want to hear your babble. It's fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, here's the thing. Would you pay for a conversation with a super candidate? This guy told a recruiter, I, I have a it. flat yeah. rate of $100 to send you my resume and $200 for a conversation about the role. It sounds crazy, but if he is perfect and if he's in great demand, you know what? I would pay. You're an idiot. Anybody? <laughs> I would pay what? him if he gives me the assurance he'd go for the first interview. Okay. Hold on. Give him Did that. Rich call me an idiot first? <laughs> yeah. Yes. He called <laughs> okay. you an idiot. Let him, let him come first. Okay. Why am I crazy? Well, uh, you heard what, hold on. What what Mario said, uh, if this is a great person, and well, there, no, there's no guarantee, right? That that yeah, you know, there's no guarantee. I mean, uh, it's like signing up for these like these surveys. Like, let me go, give me fifty bucks to go taste test these cookies or whatever. You know, it's a waste of time. No, I, at least at least okay. I if I can get him to the first interview with the client, okay. And if I had to pay three hundred bucks, if it's a very hard to find guy. PS, FS, uh, full scope poly, PS clearance, all the Prima shit. Prima donnas are not worth the time. Dude, when you need that clearance, you have no choice. Man. I've I done clearance it. searches. It, they're not <laughs> worth it. If you've got to pay a guy to go on an interview, you are wasting your time. Okay, let, <laughs> me, let, me, let me put a twist on that. I have heard of times when the candidate wanted $5,000 extra and the company would not pay it. So the recruiter kicked back part of the fee. Yeah. Is that any different, Rich? It is because you're already done with the search at that point. You know, in extreme cases, you know, it's a risk. And you wouldn't pay, you wouldn't pay it until your warranty's up. But, you know, it's better. That at least the guy's gone through the process. He wants the job. I mean, and if he doesn't know, it all depends how you lay it out, too. If the guy doesn't know the company's being cheap, you know, you may have a little ethic issue. But, um you know, it, that's it's not the end of the world to get a deal across the finish line to shave a few points off your fee. That, that's the whole point. Get the deal no, done. No, no, no. It's, it's a difference if you're doing it at the end of the process versus the very beginning. Very but beginning, look, it's gonna break. It's gonna break your heart. Look at I these agree with you, Rich. I don't disagree Imi. with you. Look at the people IME is is recruiting for these rocket ships. Okay, and they got five. They got tons of people bugging them all the time, and they're very hard to find. They're very specialized. I can understand someone saying, if they're really serious about me, they're going to pay me a fee. So they might do it not just to make the 300 bucks, but to screen out the serious recruiters. If a, listen, if you wanted to clear that with the company first, right, the company wanted to pay it, 
phenomenal. Oh, you mean you'd bill your client? Yeah, I wouldn't pay it out of my pocket on a contingent search. Absolutely not. On a small retainer, probably not also. You know, if the client's that serious, you run it by the client, say, hey, this guy will interview. You know what? I remember uh, once I was doing a search for some kind of mining engineer and I, I, I paid a few hundred dollars, more than 300 to get on a job board that I thought would help me. And it did help me. Okay. So other times it didn't. So I paid this and this, you've got a bird in the hand. Okay. Unless this person is. Oh, a, why? How do you know? You're know you're talking about that. a job board. Yeah. He's talking about a person. Yeah. yeah well, you've got uh, on the job board. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get with the person either. What if yeah, exactly. yeah, you know you've seen the profile. You know this person is real. How do you know it's real? How do you know I the guy's asking, not a crackpot? I How agree do you know with Rich on this point. In some dark room, you know. <laughs> I agree with Rich for the most part, except when it's a very, very tough search. And we just got five guys with that kind of skill. I don't mind taking the risk. Then your company should pay it. The client should pay it if they're that serious about it. I agree with you on that point. Also, I mean, and I would bring it up to the company. Say, listen, I got this guy. Maybe he's a prima donna. Maybe he's not. Do you want to pay a hundred bucks to see him? Like not to, you can pay it right to him. (laughs) All right. I'm not making money on it. That reminds me of a big yellow taxi. They charge him a hundred bucks. Justice. Isn't that what they said? She said, I can't remember the lyrics. Somebody will look it up. If the counting grows, right? If I was Joe Rogan, I would have some gopher looking up everything I talk about and then give me back the facts, okay? That's why you don't have three eyes, okay? Yeah, okay, Joe Rogan. <laughs> He's making He's cool. a billion I mean, dollars. I'm making nothing. Okay, hold on. Moving on. Attention deficit disorder. I've heard ADD. lots of recruiters say they I've have- I've got ADD. Get... It's, a, it's a beautiful thing for this business. For why sure. do you say that? Because you can focus on it. Well, you don't focus. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> but you, you know, you can have a lot of things going on at once. I mean, I've got the TV going on. I've got 80 different tabs open on my screen at once. And I just you bounce from thing to thing. How the bloody hell do you do that? This is what you do. I mean, look, at I, got, I mean, it's, just, it's what you do. I mean, okay. you just move from process to process to process. I don't know that's how you true. in this business without ADD, quite frankly. <laughs> Does Bill Gates That's have uh, ADD? Because I read that, you know, uh, sometimes uh, some productivity uh, site once, they were talking about Bill Gates can just switch from one thing to another without any uh, warm up time. And Peter Drucker uh, said, when you switch from one thing to another, it's costing you 15 minutes just to uh, adjust yourself. Mm. Okay. And I know that I can't switch to one well, from one thing to another. Rich, are you able to switch? Uh, oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, I, you're not in focus. I have to tell I'll play a video game when I'm talking to these people or, um, you know, cause they're just boring me. You know, you just, you, you, you gotta be able to multitask in this business. Like if you saw my screen right now, I mean, I literally have like three huge browsers open. I mean, I probably have 80 tabs open. Plus Why? 80 tabs? What, just cause I want to save them? stuff for later. I want to look at this thing for later. I don't want to forget to call this thing for later. What the, what's on 80 tabs? What can one you possibly tab. Rich, do? One tab. The no, 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 no. This is, about. This yeah, I know there are different different reasons for one tap, but I've got three or four different versions of my database open. I've got a bunch of LinkedIn profiles open. I got some companies I want to make sure I call. I've got a couple of script things open that I'm checking out for some sales training stuff. Okay, everybody should know Rich bought the 49 inch screen, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cost around sixty sixteen hundred dollars. Yes, you are. See, Jesus (laughs) Christ, that's a big screen. This thing is huge. Yeah, Yeah. but you know what? That's hard to move around. Yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, charge of a dollar and a half just to see him, not a hundred dollars. That's coming to me slowly. Joni's uh, song. She's an old lady now. Uh, okay, so ADHD is good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. Right. send. But the thing is, this guy is in house. He's a recruiting manager. He's got a, a new recruiter with him. He really likes the guy. He's so nice. He loves him. Right. But the guy keeps making mistakes. He said, I once asked him to download two specific resumes, screen them, and then follow very specific instructions to submit them to our client if he thought they were a fit. Instead, he downloaded the resumes and sent them to the client without speaking to the candidates. I explained how to do it, and he did it again in an email to a different uh, client. He can't seem to get it. Okay. For another I, guy, I, simple. I don't want to fire him, but I'll and so him. the people in the what should I do? People in the comments said, I'll read it. Yeah, uh, 
I have ADHD. But these recruiters are quite happy to convince, uh, conf confess publicly. This recruiter might it's, have it too. It's not a sin. <laughs> it's like, okay. I mean, it's not like we're Canadian or something. God. Well, you're, 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 the way you describe it, it's a superpower. But and it's yeah, a great thing to have. I think it's dynamite. It's a disability. Okay. Superpower. Most people, uh, it's a disability. Yeah, I agree they, with they, Dave. See? Okay. He said, I, I, he said, this guy says, if that, if that's the case, he says, ask him if he's ever addressed it. He said, I myself just started taking Adderall and it changed my life, okay? It increases my ability to be focused. And someone else said, if you ask him that, you, you're opening yourself to a lawsuit. It's illegal to ask someone who's working for you if they have ADHD, even if it seems very apparent and you're trying to help them. I mean, it's, it's, it, I don't, it's one thing if you're on meds for ADHD, or you're just like, you know, if you're a kid growing up trying to figure it out, I think it's, it can be, it can be challenging, but once you figure it out, I think it's a great thing. What, you know? Adderall or ADHD? Well, no, not, not taking drugs, just be, having ADD. You can just, you know, you're just able to focus on a lot of things or get a lot of things done at okay, once. Okay, so have you ever been diagnosed, Rich, or is that your own self diagnosis Yeah, no, no, I got diagnosed in college. Well, what prompted you to go to get diagnosed? Because I was taking a, these tests in this class where I knew all the answers, but I go to the the test and I would just mess them up. I wouldn't get. I would. I would have. I would just bomb the test. And I went to talking to the teacher, and she's like, "Was well, she gonna get tested?" And I'm like, "For this, this was back in the '90s where ADD was like the in thing, you know." And so it was. Um, I went and got tested. Like, yeah, the guy's got, got ADD. Turns out, like most of my, you know, I think everyone from my mom's from New York. I think half of New York is ADD. You know, it's even Einstein had ADD. How do you know? That, go look it up. Okay. It, go um, that, you know, it, it, did, be, be honest with you, the vast majority, I think I forget what the stat was, but honestly, most people actually technically can get diagnosed with ADD. Um, there's different yeah, levels so, of it. So it's meaningless in other words, right? It, it is because well, there's different levels. There's like extreme if you're on Adderall or, or like I've got nephews that are, you know, highly you know did you let your wife know that you had add and you're never going to listen to her properly if uh you get married <laughs> <laughs> yeah honey yeah whatever what is that thing <laughs> that's you're, a good what, one what do you what is this thing you've got on your side there this uh, yeah uh, you know what, what, I've, lost the, what the you I've lost the pads to uh. my uh <laughs> But my ear Animal, why don't you buy some new year they, I, this, this goes around the back I, this goes around the back i don't like the ones that go on top. Okay, you can't get them i went to best buy they don't have them i look go, go to wall go to wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, yeah, hang on and animal why don't you just get a mic I have I'm, a, a I'm mic. using oh. that mic today everything works that didn't work no, last get, time. like an actual quality mic you know get some cheap i bought these pebble speakers for 20 bucks on amazon they work great and I got this, I bought this, I got a new mic last week for this blue Yeti mic. Let me you know? show, show it to us. It's, listen, look at it. Yeah. It's a blue Yeti mic. You know, can you see it? Yeah. You make calls on that, uh, Rich? All day long, baby. This is how I talk to everyone all day oh, long. Oh, you don't ah. talk on your, your speakerphone anymore? No, I've been using this mic for like years. I had another mic, but then I didn't like how it sounded all of a sudden. So I got this new one a few weeks ago, put an so arm on So you're calling, it. you make your calls through the internet? 100%. This is how I talk That's to everyone. And, and where do you hear? Where do you? you I, know I have speakers attached to my Mac. Oh, so you're hearing it just from the speakers? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So what twenty. They got twenty bucks. These Pebble speakers. They're called. They're real. They're small, but they're they're good. Um, they sound great. And if then I got twenty bucks. Who cares? What? For twenty bucks, who cares? Exactly. If they last you for three months. It's okay. Even yeah, I've, I've, had, I've, I've had them for two years. These speakers are great. Oh Jesus, that's yeah, awesome. honestly. Rich, but and I thought I was being cheap. <laughs> cheap. It works. <laughs> what, 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 what's what's cheap? What works? No, I, I appreciate it. Understand? It's a compliment. Yeah, you're yeah. really using them. Yeah, you, you would have probably made a million dollars out of twenty bucks. I, I, well, that's the thing. Literally, I just got my taxes done. If I if I spend like ten thousand dollars a year on expenses, it's a lot. You know? Yeah. I mean, oh. that's the thing. I mean, so you, you, this is the thing. I was talking to someone about this the other day. Too. You don't need to spend a ton of money on this business to make a lot of money. True, you, true, true. You know? I won't disagree with you. I agree. You with don't you totally. use LinkedIn recruiter. It's like 16,000 bucks, right? Yeah, I, I have. I do have sales nav, which I don't really use that much, but I have it. Sales, sales, sales net. Yeah. Sales net. Navigator, navigator, navigator. Yeah. Check out oh, okay. Seek Out. You won't need you won't need a LinkedIn. Yeah, recruiter. I used Seek Out a long time ago. Is it is it gotten better? It's, 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 it's yeah, I mean you have access to it for 
a variety of industries and uh, it gives you a lot of, you could like depending upon if diversity is important, you can slice and dice, um, you know, okay. and really find- Okay, so this is a for. famous David M. Marr, okay? Yeah. Uh, he hey, doesn't David. introduce himself, so he just starts talking. Oh. He's, there's nothing to advertise for him, but he's an in-house corporate recruiter and he's endorsing Seekout as his favorite contact information tool. Is that what you're doing, David M. Marr? It's, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's more robust than just a contact tool. It's, I would say it's a sourcing tool. Okay. But uh, let me just come back. Rich Rosen, what made you switch to this from your phone? You were so happy with you the, using the speakerphone. I, I switched years ago. Um, no, you didn't. I did too. But you told us earlier that a few months back, you told you used a normal 8x8. Eight eight, uh, yeah, well, I used Ring Central, and, and then okay. I was using the speakerphone on 8x8. Eight eight. But for the last two years, I was using a mic and no phone. Like I had my speakerphone next to me. But right. the uh, mic. And is, how do people call you? Same way. They call. I answer it on my computer, answer it on my phone, answer it on my watch, wherever I want. It's fantastic. It's like Dick Tracy? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you do whatever you want. But I David mean, like, he's, the, he, he's the Dick Tracy of recruiting. David and Mark. So your company pays for it, or do you have to pay for Seek Out yourself? Um, well, they do not pay for it here. Uh, I've used it at other companies. I don't use it. Oh, like, I'm, okay. on, I'm on Seek Out now. I haven't used this. I haven't been on Seek Out in literally almost exactly two years. I'm, I got all these old searches listed in there. I'll have to check it out now, see if it got better. How much yeah, is it? Up at How much is it? I uh, believe it was like 3500 for a C for a year. Per year. But they have it for like $40 for 20, uh, what do you call, uh, for 20 200 years? contact details, right? No, no, $40 for contact details, right? I oh, got you it can recently. buy a la carte. You can buy a la yeah, carte. A la carte yeah. well. Okay. Fine. Well, the, okay. the founder the founder of the company uh, used to be in a Microsoft executive. So as a result of that, he's got insights into, you know, LinkedIn. Allegedly, that's a good selling point because Microsoft is uh, owns LinkedIn as well. So this guy knows the the back secrets. Yeah, supposedly. Like Ch Chatterworks guys are the same thing. I I, I um actually I'm actually going to go on the board of uh, the be an advisor for Chatterworks, hey, which is cool. early. Can you give me a discount? It's it's an early stage company. You, you, you'll, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. You can, uh, but they're but the same guy. These are the guys that built uh, Connectifier years ago yeah, and then yeah. sold, it to, uh, sold it to LinkedIn. So he's tied into all these guys too. There's so many of these things coming out now. Um, Colby, but, right? You spoke with him, right? So which one? Colby, Colby right? Colby, right? Co no. He's the guy. No. He's the guy who handles the work. Uh, okay. Maybe I spoke to Colby about Chatterbox. Even I'm using Chatterbox. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the space. And, you know, it's like everything else. You got to have multiple solutions. I don't think any of them Correct. are perfect. You know, but they got, they got a whole lot of cool, they have a lot of cool things on the horizon. Um, they're hoping to come yeah. out with. So it's going to be fact, well. go I have to renew this month. Next month, renew Chatterworks. For there us. you go. Renew, renew. Yeah. yeah, that's the story. But it's okay. I mean, what you said yeah. is correct, Rich. For the money we put in, we really make some good money out of this business. Yeah. You can't find any businesses that give a, about what? At least a five times return on the investment. Yeah. Well, I you mean, know, if you're Rich, making a million, Rich, Ivan helped hit this guy figure out. You can hear his sound is better. Uh, thank you, Ivan. That was yeah. all due to Ivan. He he never tested his. He wasn't speaking from his mic. He has his mic. He wasn't speaking from his his, his <laughs> mic. Stupid to computer. His See what happened is I used used to use this computer for gaming. Okay, and yeah. I had fixed up the Oculus set on this. So yeah, I don't care about that. your excuses. Hey, everybody, <laughs> we've <laughs> only got geniuses. We've only got geniuses on this show. Or now you know why we worship Rich because we're so stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. should be the clip for the week right there right so there you go. okay my, okay hanukkah's Here's, coming up baby you can put that put that out it's there. a little while away let's not jump the gun purple okay squirrel, just got over all those other holidays okay look everybody what about this resilience this is a, i read an article that gavin uh posted and uh he said it said resilience is a skill gained from dealing with uh, with obstacles, handling obstacles without outside help, people who have never had a major major obstacle thrown in their way rarely become resilient. Okay, now Joe Mullings, who is a great recruiter in my opinion, does anybody else agree with me here? Okay, don't worry about. It. He's a great <laughs> recruiter. He's a smart guy. Okay, and he only hires people to work on his team 
who have had some kind of trial in their lives that uh, they've overcome. So he must actually ask them, you know, what struggles have you overcome in your life? I don't know if that's legal to tell you the truth. Okay. If you can't ask, ask someone if they, maybe they've got ADHD. I don't know if you can say, look, what, what, what private struggles have, or professional struggles have you, you had? You can ask that Maybe. question. Why can't you ask it? There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's Professional, a not private. What yeah. personal struggles have you had in your life? Have you, no, you know, it's how you word it. Tell me an incident or a part of, of a portion of your life where you've overcome some tremendously tough or difficult obstacles. There you have it. It's a, it literally, it's a, it's a question they ask on, you know, when you're applying for college, it's usually an essay question, actually. Hold on, David M. Marr, you're on the inside. Is that legal or not? Yeah, it, it, I would agree with Mario and Rich that it depends on how it's worded, but yeah, it's not a, an illegal question. Yeah, I mean, literally, they ask that on almost every college application. What, you know, yeah. tell me a story about what you, something you've overcome. If can. I asked it, I would get charged, just so I want you to know. Seriously? Okay? In, in I Canada? believe I would, yes, okay? You believe I believe you would. would. See, I don't want your beliefs. I want to know the facts. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice, Mario. Nice, nice. <laughs> Animal got animals. <laughs> yeah. Okay. On a change, right? I wanted to ask a, I wanted to ask a question. Well, okay, so hold on, Rich, just let me clarify for a second. So your phone, the phone system you're using with these speakers and this microphone, which is no better than mine, by the way, this is a blue, blue, <laughs> uh, whatever I've got. Okay, but uh, you're using Ring Central to hook them together. Is that right? Yes. Does that yeah. cost money? Yeah, Ring Central. What do I? I don't even. Thirty dollars and uh, thirty dollars, right? Uh, per Something seat. like that. Thirty, forty yeah, bucks yeah, yeah. a month. Yeah. You know? And how do you dial? Um, I literally just click the dial. I got the, the numbers in my database, and I just click call. <laughs> you know, his, like his ATS is connected to the Ring Central. Uh, Ring Central. Yeah. Um, it's like totally linked. He's got a full yeah, link. The, the ATS is, is is fully linked, but you can also just click make a call and dial a phone number on your keypad on your on your computer. Or you can cut and paste a phone okay. number in there. And you've got a phone number that if it they call you, it it rings on your phone, on your computer, and on your watch all yep. at the same time. Yeah, I mean you can set it so it does it in a different way, but yeah. So like, if so you Mario, leave, call him. Let's yeah, hear so, him. exactly. No, so, so, yeah. <laughs> if you but leave I, home, if you leave home yeah. and you're watching your kids' basketball game, yeah. uh, you set it so it can it can Autom You don't have to. You don't have to. I have it set automatically to ring everywhere. Like it will ring twice on my my computer, and then it will ring on my computer and my phone. You know, and if it's my phone, and what if what if a call is coming in while you're talking to somebody else? You can either pause the call, you can have end the call and go to you know voicemail. You could end the call and pick it up, whatever you want to do. Normal phone. Okay. It's a soft phone. It's called a soft phone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does anybody else think that's great or uh, and I don't you, know and Animal, that's pretty. It. You text that's pretty from old it all, school now. Yeah. Right. So you, be, you also old. text from it, so it records it in your database and everything. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, hockey okay. season starts tonight, Animal. Ruin starts yeah, tonight. I'm not never been a fan. Except when I was a little kid. You're a kid. Be, How are you not a fan? My, I, my father, I used to like I used to like collecting hockey cards. And the thing is, my father and I always had fights because I would call the Maple Leafs the Mapes. <laughs> 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 I, I was uh, about seven or eight, and I always called them the Mapes. And he would always say, they're the Leafs. They're the Leafs. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't help it, right? And he, he's a bad-tempered guy, or he was. And he the may the leaves, not the mapes. Okay, the I mapes. like the mapes, <laughs> and that I guess that it was a trauma. It turned me off after a while, right? <laughs> Although sad to hear that. I read an, a book by a woman who uh, was the only woman in her office. I can't remember what her her some kind of financial job or something, and she said she deliberately started reading the sports pages so she would uh, be able to have a, a good rapport yeah. with the other people in the office because they like the guys like talking about sports so uh, uh should recruiters even if they're not interested in a sport make sure to read about sports so they can uh, build rapport yeah. with uh it doesn't hurt but not necessary there's a million no, other things you can build there's a million other things you can build rapport with but it doesn't doesn't hurt it's an easy commonality uh -huh. you know Anybody especially else? I've been sending emails out for like, if I see like a college team, you know, if you see this guy went to a big 10 school and the college team lost or won, you know, send him an email that says, Hey, go like corn huskers or whatever, man, you know, gets an easy intro. Okay. Open the door. 
Okay. You know? Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. Here's a question. How to deal with gut feelings feedback. Okay. So mm. you, you got to hire. I've got a whole list of things that people don't like about hiring managers. And one of them is uh, the only feedback they say, you know, I don't like the feel of this person. It's a gut feel. Okay. A recruiter, she doesn't like that. She wants to know exactly what was wrong. Okay. Is, is, uh, I want to know since Rich, I, I know you'll deny it, but you're famous for saying if they're not cooperative, walk away from that client. Is this a deal breaker for you when they just say, Rich, uh, no, I don't, I don't like this guy. And you say, why? And they, my feeling, my gut feel. What is it, Rich? Uh, no, it's not, it's not, it, it's not you just walk away from it just because of that. But if you, you, you got to push them a little bit and say, listen, what exactly didn't you like? How can I possibly help you by just saying, eh, you, know, you know, what do you, what do you want me to tell the candidate? You know, do you want me to tell them, Hey, or and, and how do you want me to do the search? How do you want me to continue the search? What do you want to see better? What do you want to see different? You know, you got to push them for info, you know, and try to figure out where this guy was off. Was it just his tone? Was he flat? You know, so probe push. And if they don't comply after you've asked, what happens then? You know, it, it definitely, the search definitely takes a dip. You know, it's definitely not going to be as high a priority. Do you warn them? You say, listen, uh, <laughs> Bill, or listen, Shirley, uh, I'm only using English names, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> then, uh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to work, put my full yeah, focus it, on your search. Again. Do you actually threaten them like that? No, no, you make everything like it's so black and white. It's It's totally not. Um, but no, I tell them, listen, I mean, I mean, how would you want me to go forward with this? What do you want to see different? And if they can't answer that question, I mean, it's kind of a flag. And, and then what do you do when that flag comes up? That's what I'm asking, Rich. Well, as I said, you, you know, know, he puts it on me. I ask him a legitimate question. And he says, oh, something's wrong with you, animal. Well, because you don't ask legitimate questions. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You are famous for saying, for telling these people, for You're actually right. firing clients with, with them. Being, there's a difference between firing clients for a jerk versus firing clients for just because, you know, they're trying to figure it out. Sometimes they just don't know. And you're right. It doesn't, if it was the last two years, yeah, you know what, that, that role is going to slide down the, uh, the mountain a bit on your, on your priorities, your priority, you know? So, but, you know, cause you can only, you, what are you going to do if you're just literally hiring from gut instinct? You, you, you know, you'd be wasting your time, but that's your main search. Okay, so you would not, but, but you're saying you would not refuse to deal with someone who played that game with you. Again, it all the, is black and white. You can't, it, there's always a gray area. If they continue every candidate, they can never give you any feedback on. How many is every candidate? Two, three? Two or you three, bring yeah. in three good candidates and they say, oh, I don't like Yeah, I mean, if I, if, listen, if I give someone three, I mean, I only typically send three or four candidates. So if I give you three candidates and you can't give me any real feedback on any of them, yeah, I mean, that search is probably toast. Okay, I'm going to ask the other guys, but I'll give you the real answer here. One person. <laughs> one. If I work hard and bring in one person and they can't tell me why they're rejecting them, get out of here! I'm not wasting my <laughs> time right. on Animal. you, you idiot! Animal, hold up. Animal, what kind of searches are you working on? You know, let's say a project manager for a, a strategic project manager for a hospital. Boy, there's not many guys okay, like so, that available. Yeah. You got to reel them in, and the money might be, oh, just go in and take a look, please. You know, you might like it. <laughs> you know, they might even kick up the money if they think that you're really special. Cool. Okay. Okay. Animal already gave him 100 bucks that, to go interview. Go ahead. You, know, <laughs> you know, you're taking tranquilizers to calm down because the search is so hard. And don't tell me there aren't recruiters doing that because I see them whining about how hard their searches are and they're overloaded. Okay. And so you're, you're doing your best. And this guy just shrugs when you got the asset. Well, what's wrong with this candidate? Screw you. Okay. Me. I'm not working with you anymore. Rich, hey. I think the animal has gone hyper. He's got uh, I think so. He, need, he needs some Adderall. Maybe he needs a gummy, I think. I don't I'm know. Passionate. I'm just passionate. <laughs> You're passionate? That's not passionate. That's sounding. That's wild. Wait a second. <laughs> David M. Marr is the only guy who's on the inside here. Okay. You got to live with these jerks who reject you. You can't walk away. Or can you? Okay. Because you're working more than one search. Would you, so, uh, if you're uh, still with, yeah. So typically when somebody gives you like, um, I mean, another bad one that says gut feel, I would say is like culture, not a culture fit. That's oh, such God. an ambiguous BS yeah. type answer that um, usually will probe differently. Um, 
if they don't give me a direct answer, like a trick I learned a long time ago when I was an agency was send people on two ends of the spectrum based upon whatever their profile is and whichever one they express an interest to interview, that's what I keep sending them. Okay, I do not say, really say that again. Understand. Wait, say that again. He sends so a variety of people and then then they don't even have to say they, they pick one. You want chocolate or vanilla. So he just sends chocolate and vanilla and they pick one or the other. And then you know how from that, with, he knows with certain profiles, there are certain like extremes that the profile could uh, yeah. drive. I don't like with. those games. OK, I don't want to have to figure out stuff and then get screwed later on. I want them to tell me clearly. OK, and I believe Sometimes that Ernie, I don't think they know what they want or what they need. So you Sometimes, kind of, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's why you got to probe. Right. But that's yeah, why you, you, you can't just say, you know, if, if they don't know, you got to pull it out of them. You got to make them figure it out. And sometimes, you know, and it's not like these guys are a lot of times these guys are not like professional interviewers. They don't know how to interview. They're yep. just like, I don't know. This is what they told me to ask. You know, they don't even know what they're really looking it's, for sometimes. And some you companies, know? some companies don't have good in, uh, management, hiring manager interviewing training yep. or, or, or managing or at all for that matter. <laughs> yeah, and most don't have it at all. That, you know, is doing things the way that, I don't know, they were taught or their mentor taught. It sounds like you guys are just making excuses for them. If that's true, <laughs> David M. Marr, you say, look, uh, Billy, I am a professional recruiter. Let me guide you, okay? <laughs> this is very, what's wrong with that? This is very important. You want me to be directed oh, and get you what you want? Then you've got to work with me this way. I got a checklist of questions and we're going to go through them, okay? And if, if not, I'm warning you. Okay, that, there's got to be a little warning there, Ernie. If Hello. if if your client, sorry, I'm going to beat this to death. If your if your if your client, if you send out a good candidate, the client says uh, I'm rejecting them, and you say why? I just don't like the feel of this person. What are you going to do? Walk away? No, I'd ask him more questions as to why. Come on, tell me more. You got to and then just kind of, I, I would probably leave it alone. Okay, but well, here's yeah. what somebody said. Tom said, and I like this. Uh, it's something I've never done. He said, tell the, teach the person at the beginning before you start the search. Look, the kind of feedback I'm going to need is not just vague. It's going to have to be very detailed. Well, Rich, do you yeah. do that? Are you, did my, you, you, yeah, I mean, it's, is that in your contract? Isn't something like that about get back to me within 40 yeah, hours? I guess and, you have to get back to me within so much time. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't make it a hard, fast rule for you got to give me this feedback. I mean, I tell them in the conversation, listen, the more feedback you give me, the better I'm going to be able to do for you. If you don't give me any feedback, you know, it's probably not going to be the top of the list. You know, so he does threaten them. Look, he made me look like an idiot. And he just, <laughs> but it's again, it's, you know, it's in the beginning of the conversation. They don't, they just take it for whatever. It's just more of a comment. It doesn't happen in every, every client conversation. You know, but then once you go into the search, you know, listen, if they're not giving you feedback, what are you doing? Like, why but would are you, you using the words you are not top of the list or which exact wording do you use if you talk to them? When, you know, when I when I come up, like I'm trying to think of the last time I've, I've said it, it doesn't, like I said, it's not like an every conversation thing. You got to kind of get a feel for it. People haven't used recruiters a lot. They got to understand how to how to work with recruiters. Um, but I, I mean, I. I don't know what my exact wording is, but it's probably pretty close to that because I'm pretty blunt. But Rich, so. if, if, it, if like they have worked with recruiters and you know that and they don't get back to you. Yeah, I'll send them an email. If they're not getting back to me, I'll send them a text. Say, listen, I'll just put the searches on hold until I hear from you. No, no. when you're doing that and say you're working with an internal recruiter, do you ever do that? Rarely. Okay, but when you do an internal recruiter or someone down the line and your contact is somebody above them, but you're dealing with a hiring manager. Yeah, I, I, so I, I, I mean, I, I've got the, I've got an example right now. I mean, I've got I've dealing with both the internal recruiter and the and the CRO. They're the slowest company on the planet, you know. So I, I just I sent them a text this morning. I'm like, guys, it's been like three, you know a week now, basically, you know, since we got any feedback. I'm going to assume you're not that interested. So this guy says start, start interviewing other clients of mine, you know. And then the internal recruiter gets back. So, oh no, no, we're very interested, very interested. I'm like, great, then let's get something set up. You know, and then it's cricket. So I was like, whatever, so, you know. So, so you, I sent the guy so up for another opportunity. So you rat him out. What? So you rat him out. The well, internal recruiter. What do you mean? No, I didn't rat anyone out. It's the. Well, I mean, you tell the recruiter, the internal recruiter's job is to get back to you. No, not, it, it, it's she's waiting for the CRO. She's waiting for the sale. The, you know, either way, I don't really give a shit who's 
supposed to get back to me? Because that's why, I mean, this is why I like dealing with the hiring manager, not the internal recruiter. Not that I don't like the internal recruiters, but they're mm -hmm. just beholden to the guy above them. So David M. Marr is on the inside. What would you yeah. do if you were, uh, what, what should Rich do in that situation, David M. Marr? I think that he should, uh, you know, press, if you, if, if you don't have direct hiring manager access and you're stuck going through an internal recruiter, um, I mean, I would prioritize if they're not, if they're not responding in time, then exactly. lower on the list. No, no, what I want to know is that what Ivan asked, what words would you use? How blunt quote rich would you get? Okay. What would you I'm say to that internal? Well, recruiter? I mean, I would be direct, but I would be professional in my tone. I you would, know, I don't uh, like those vague words. I, Ivan said, what vague. words would you use? It's I don't want blunt turd. and professional. I don't know it's what that means. The, You're delivering a shit sandwich. Here it is. Exactly. It's like, it, like I said, listen, I don't, I was pretty blunt. It's like, listen, if you guys aren't interested, let me know. If you are interested, let me know. Either way, I'm sending this guy out for other, other interviews or he's going to, you know, he's looking at other opportunities. I'm like, I, I mean, I, well, I paused the was search. Was it like a retained search that you didn't submit the person to several jobs at the same time or? This was, this was a contingent search. I really didn't have anything else for him because it's a, it's a whole long story behind the search. But, but why you sent the person then not directly to like five companies? Because it's a it's a whole unique story. It's not a story. Okay. but it, you know normally uh, if it's contingent, I would anyway. But they don't need to know that. But once they're not getting back to you, then you can say, listen, you just throw it out there because everyone thinks they're it's their own bubble, and everyone else you know forgets there's other bubbles out there. You know, so sometimes you got to remind them, hey, listen, there's other things out there. You're not that important. Like this company is a shit company anyway that just went through a new CEO, brought a new CRO, and they like said whole long story. Behind you, it. do you write but, that in the in the new? You write that in the. <laughs> I tell them. Uh, uh, well, you know what? I do tell as, them in the interview when I'm screening them. I tell them because right, they're going to figure it out. Well, hold on, hold on. You tell you know, them what if they got gotta, through changes or this is a shit company. Yeah. You know? uh, no, no. He says he says it nicely. He'll say, "Well, as you may be aware, you are a shit company." Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, some, listen. There's certain clients, certain companies. You got to have to remind them they're a C player. You know, <laughs> and I did this with I, this company. I, I was working with the PE firm and I had a big conversation with the with the uh, investor. And I'm like, you realize this thing is like a total C player. Right. And these candidate pool that you're looking at is horrible. And he's like, yeah, we kind of figured it out. <laughs> you know, I mean, you deal with the VCs. How are you rich? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. The smart ones, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so they actually participate in the hiring, the, the guys who are funding the companies. Some do, not often, but some do. Okay, because that would be a problem if there's a, the, the founder is there and wants somebody and the, the VC is saying, no, I'm going to handle the hiring here. It happens, well, that part happens a lot. Sometimes the founders want the VC's input also, especially if it's a senior level role. Mm -hmm. And you sometimes know. they get jealous, you know, they get, yeah. upset. They get into Well, power. that's part of this problem was exactly that's what happened. One of the board members ended up taking over the CEO role. One of the other, it's the whole mess. It was, it's a long okay. story. Okay. <laughs> what, if, what if someone asked a question? What if, when you're interviewing or you're screening somebody and you realize partway through this candidate's no good? Okay. They're not qualified in the mid interview. Okay. Uh, do you cut it short? And how do you do that? Or do you just finish it off? Anybody want to answer? It depends. Are they not good because they're just boring people? Or are they not good because they're just not good for that particular role? They're you know? not good for that role. They don't have what really exactly what you want. Yeah. So you figure out what else you can use them for. You should never be interviewing just for that particular company or role. Well, you might not you. have anything else for them. But hopefully you're going to have something else for them in the future. <laughs> yeah, Otherwise, okay, so you you finish off the interview. That's that's you finish if, off the interview. Yeah, if they're good. I mean, if they're if the guy is boring as hell or he's a hundred years old or he's you know, just don't say that, okay? Well, yeah, yeah, well, no, no hundred euro guys in sales. So that's okay. But e either way, if they, you know, but if they have skills and they're just not right for your role today, you definitely want to keep the guy warm for tomorrow. Okay, so you don't and you, you, you definitely and you look at them like if if they have a higher role, they're going to be a boss somewhere. Yeah, in their contact. Exactly. So you treat exactly. you treat them very nice, and they'll remember you. I just called a guy today. I sent him out an interview seven years ago. And now today he's, he's just got funding for his company, for a company he founded. I'm like, fantastic. You know, they remember. They remember better than you do. 
they a lot of them do that's for sure okay so no nobody says part way you know this guy i'm recruiting um uh mario for that's a bad recruiter job x and i can see now it's not a match and i'm just gonna you know mario i don't think we got anything going here i'm gonna i'm gonna cut it out now nobody does that right well, nobody it, does that right that's a sign of a moron who doesn't know his basics exactly <laughs> there we <go>. exactly <laughs> There we go. Okay, uh, Mario, I've got a question that I was waiting Please, for you to go come ahead. back. Okay, and uh, Rich <laughs> said, Rich said, too, what about uh, when you've got a search that's stealth, where you can't tell anybody that either sometimes what the company is and sometimes what they're doing? Like uh, Imi, our famous friend, yeah, she, yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. she said, you know how hard it is recruiting people when uh, you can't tell them what the company's doing exactly? And this guy said, welcome to clearance jobs, uh, right? Yeah. And that's where you focus. Am I right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So you're not allowed to tell anybody about what's, uh, what's involved in the job? See, what's... Uh, to be very frank, half the time, I have no clue what they do in the job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't it's, either. It's, it's very technical. And see, I'm not a very technical person. My I, my game is to sell the company, but I normally don't tell them the company name too at times. Okay, Mario until they're really today. interested in the company. Well, hmm? how do you handle it when you when they say, "Okay, Mario, what company are we talking about?" What do you say? I'll tell them they're a government subcontractor, and if you confirm your interest in the role, I'll present you to them, and then we'll schedule a call with them. But okay, you may so not have heard you, of them. You actually tell them, "I'm going to send your resume to the company." Without, yeah, letting you, without letting you know where your resume is going. You'll only no, find no, no, out no. I'll tell them the general gist of the job, the location, the details. Okay. But I cannot give the name. But see, we don't really work searches like that because it's a federal thing. We can tell them the company name. Okay. We just don't know what exactly happens inside the role. Okay. And so they don't know either. So you, so you just say. No, they know mind. because they do the job, but then they can't divulge that to a recruiter, right? Those are classified. That's classified data. And it, okay, yeah, if, if, he's if, losing if you, me. Hold on. Rich said he works these jobs too. Oh, Ernie wants to get he in. Wants Ernie, to say, sure. If if you if you have if you do this at a higher level, and people have been around the block in terms of they're they're truly professionals and up there. What's your definition like, of higher level? Let me just let me just say this though. If you tell somebody it's a confidential search, and I hope you understand that, I've always had people just say, "Yeah, I understand." Exactly. I mean, the guys and, who know it, and, know it. Yeah. And, and then they, from there. And there are morons sense, who don't know it. In what sense? So you morons. can't say the company or you can't say what's no, involved see, in the job. We don't tell the, see, normally what happens, let me tell you the scenario. We are competing with other recruiting firms also for similar candidates. All right. Okay. Sometimes a, a government subcontractor will have two, three firms working together. Okay. And sometimes some candidates think they're very smart. They bypass us and they go and they get screwed on the offer. Okay, this happened just recently. All right. But we tend to give them the details of the company. Okay. But we can't give them the exact details of the job. Because but you, you don't the know company, or you give the company you name? Say. Yeah, so we do normally tell them the company name. Okay. Okay. That's a little okay. But different. sometimes I've asked my guys to be to make it confidential until I talk to the candidate. Because I'm the final guy who decides whether he goes or not. Ernie, do they have? Do you have you handled a, a stealth search, Ernie? And then it's just it's a walk in the park. I can't tell you. Okay, Ernie. Not, not, not sales, but confidential searches I have. Yes. Yeah. And there's somebody on board, and everybody understands that. They just sort of say, yeah, you know, there's somebody on board. It's confidential. It's this but is they're going to be fired. They're going to be firing this person. Doesn't that put the fear of God into them? Say, hey, they're firing this guy. What's going to happen to me? I have to know the details. No, they never ask that. They never ask that. They always okay. Everybody's looking out for themselves. Yeah. But at exactly. the same time, let's ask Apollo Creed here. What's the answer? Okay. <laughs> Rich, wake up. <laughs> working, my friend. Working. Oh, no, but you up? said you've worked on clearance jobs too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, what do you yeah. do? What can, can you tell them that you can't tell them the company or you can't tell them? I, I, I never I never lead a conversation with who the company is. You know, like yeah. I'm not working for clearances like like. Like Mario was like working for a government agency, minor software company selling into these defense companies yeah. or, and they need clearance for those roles. So, but I never, I never lead my opportunities ever with, Hey, I'm working for company X. It's but always I, a conversation. Rich, then, but, 
D during the conversation at the end, do you tell them the name of the company? And if I if I'm going to move them forward, yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Until you know they're interested in the role, you don't yeah. divulge the company name. Only yeah, a they, fool they does that. Oh, unless you're working internally. So yeah, you need to I, sell I, the company. Yeah, I mean, I never understood the reason. You know, there's two, th it's very rare I'll ever. I mean, I don't think, I can't remember the last time I ever gave a company up first, but it's like sending a blind resume. Like if a company wants, oh, send me a blind resume. It's never go anywhere. You know, yeah. blind resumes and giving companies, the, giving the name of a company first, before you talk to someone, uh, rarely do they result in, in any kind of money. Okay, Rich, uh, let's get the in the Ivan question here. If they say, Rich, what company are you working with? What do you say exact words? I say, well, listen, what's going on in your situation? So you just <laughs> avoid, you just pretend yeah. you didn't hear it. Yeah. And then, but it's like, I heard it, but I don't really care. I was like, let's, what's going on in your situation? What do you, you know, it's like, basically you're asking like, what do you need to know? You know, let's see what makes sense. I've got. And Why do I need to know? You want me to work there? It wouldn't it be nice for me to know? Yeah. No, I said, listen, I represent a ton of companies. I mean, I can give you a list of fifty. Would you like them alphabetical? How would you like them? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it, it's you know, let me find a little bit about you. Let me help you. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not asking for any money. I'm actually looking to help you make more money and better your career. You know, get ahead. Yeah. You know, it's it's more about hey, what can I really do for you? If you're and and people that are that are open or intelligent realize that's the case anyway. The guy that just wants to know the name of the company, ninety nine percent of the time, they He's just not want interested to in the role, right? Yeah. So, so, yeah, exactly. so what you're, what you're saying, we had guys like that. If, you say what you're saying that if if they invest the time to talk to you about their background yeah. and, and tell you what their needs are and et cetera, their skills, then that is the beginning of knowing that there's an interest and they're legitimate. And what if they're they, looking if, for. If they don't, Actually, if they don't tell, if they don't tell you anything at the beginning then you know they're just messing with you. Absolutely. Tony, actually, we have a company policy, which I created, which my recruiters tell any of the candidates, that see, as per company policy, until we have a conversation with you, we cannot divulge any specific details about the company name, but we can give you the general salary, what they want from the candidate, and the location of the job, if it's not remote. Mm -hmm. And the job title, of course. Yeah, you, you have a, a, different, uh, it's a different way because it's just the fact that the type of clients you deal with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even with my general clients, I have general IT guys I work with, but even them, we have some financial guys who we work for. Okay. And we don't give the name until we're sure the candidate's interested in the role. Well, hold, let me, let me ask a question in here. I asked originally, I said, well, what happens if you're mid the last question, you're midway through the interview, you realize this uh, person's not a, a match for your current search. Uh -huh. uh, and then you get to the end of the interview and you know that it's not a match. What do you tell the candidate then, you know what, we've spoken for a half an hour. I don't think you're a match for anything current that I'm working on, uh, but you know, uh, I'll put you in my database and perhaps we'll speak again. Is that is that what you say? How do you, uh... No, first rule of thumb, it should never be that. You should know if the candidate's a match when you take the call with the candidate, at least 80% or 60% match. But if there are scenarios which we face where the candidate doesn't have a current clearance, we tell them here, see, this is the problem. You don't have a clearance yeah. right now. This role requires it. So well, let me see if something else comes up. But, but it, not a match in the sense that sometimes they say, you know what, I don't want to move to that area or I don't want to go to that particular That's a, town. Don't make it easy for you to answer that question. The person's interested. You don't think it's a match or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, uh, at the end of it, then you just tell them, look, I don't think there's a match here. And these are the reasons I don't think there's a match. Yeah. So, yeah, you need to have something. But, but, I, but I'll hold you in the future. You know, I, I see yeah, you're, you're not doing any good to lie to them. You know, yeah, you tell them you, you. because Rich was going on and everybody, you know, uh, 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 well, what do you think? I'm recruiting him for one job. I've got a very yeah. jobs. I want to know. Yeah. That's Rich works in the niche of sales niche. niche okay, mm -hmm. so he has an advantage there. No, and most of his now he's saying he tells him, "No, look, I'm working on this search, and you're not the one for this." Maybe we'll. Talk well, I'm not going to if they're if they're not a fit for that opportunity. I generally don't tell them who the company is. But you don't tell them you're they're a moron, right? No, no but at I, the end, at I the end of the, at, you know? at the yeah, okay, at the <laughs> end of the meeting, though, at the end of the meeting, you do say, you know what, uh, I I called up and said I'm working on an interesting position, but it is interesting, but not for you, okay? <laughs> yeah. Do you tell them? That? Do you tell them that? <laughs> well, I, I say, listen, it's great for the right person. You're not the right person, you know. <laughs> you actually say that? No, I say don't that? say that. No, I just what, what do you say? That, I want to know. Listen, it's probably it's really not going to be a fit. They really want either more experience here or a deeper deeper exposure to this or you, um, want, or you want too much money 
Yeah, sometimes just the money's not going to fit. I mean, oh, easy way to get out of it. it. <laughs> they tell you what where they're at for money and say, listen, these guys are never going to come up to it. You know, to that kind of money. Even they're, not they're, gonna come, they're not going to come up to 50000 Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're never going to pay you twenty seven grand. God. But, uh... <laughs> Hold on. I have my follow-up question. And the invisible guys are free to chime in as well. What about <laughs> if it's not like, you know, these guys, you know how they set up the answers for themselves so they seem so reasonable? You really have to dig, oh, oh yeah, you're not good for this reason and this X, you're missing this. What if you just don't like the person's personality? You don't think. Uh, yeah, it yeah, is... happens. What it do is... you say? What do you say then? Okay. You bluff yeah. them on something else. Oh, it's That's the money. You go, to the salary. <laughs> you go to the salary. Yeah, you go to, you go to the salary. Sometimes you call it, you know, sometimes you just call them back and say, listen, they changed the location. They want the guy in LA, not Boston. You know, it's just an easy out. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's very simple. <laughs> nobody, nobody can go to LA. They want you in downtown New York. <laughs> exactly. They want you in Hoboken. You know, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> You know, when uh, conf uh, recruiting conferences were a big thing before the pandemic, I used to ask the back people, pinnacle conference this week. Okay, okay, yeah. welcome, good for you. Uh, <laughs> there, there, uh, they used to ask people, well, if you're at a conference and you're talking to a person, how do you break off the conversation? How do you get away from them? It was always, oh, I have to go to the washroom or I have to first refresh my drink. It was never uh, nice talking to you. I'm going to go talk to somebody else. <laughs> it was never, it was never that forward. Okay, there's always some angle, everybody. Uh, did, oh, they bluff them. There's some kind of bluff involved. Well, listen, you don't, you don't right, have to be obnoxious. Listen, or just, something like that. But you don't have to be obnoxious just because the guy's not a fit for this role. You want to keep him for future, unless he's a total dud. But then you still want to be rude because you never know who they know. You know, you David and Mar, you want to say anything? I think it's best to be professional always. And exactly. uh, don't use that word, okay? It doesn't mean anything. It what does mean, say, what, what it does it mean? It means you're respectful and you're not just you're not just a dick. How does if that? Don't use that okay. word either. God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How does it come down? I want. I'm blaming this on Ivan. How does it come down to actual words, okay? Well, animal. It was nice talking to you. I have to trans. I have somebody I have to talk to over there, and uh, we'll connect at a future date. Boom. There done. You go. Yeah. You be talking to me for an hour, and go. now you're saying yeah. uh, oh, 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 you're going to know in 15 mean? minutes. You you know in 15 well, minutes. I mean, when you go to when you go to when you go to the uh, you know conferences and uh, networking events and things of that sort, you're not there to talk to somebody for the entire time. You're there to meet people. So you spend a little bit of time with a lot of people, and depending upon your conversation, you're switching the, the topic. And now I wasn't talking about networking, but even then, you're not answering the question. Do you say, "Hey, hey, Susie"? It was great to meet you. I'm going to go talk to uh, Betty now. Is that what you say? I would say I've got other people. <laughs> I had I enough of I you. Got, I had enough of you, meet. okay? You don't know yeah. anything. What am I talking to you for? Yeah, you're an idiot. Go away. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. Ivan, yeah. Ivan, do you have anything to contribute? Klein, do you have anything? Yeah, you, ju you just say, so nice meeting you. That's all. You don't need to say like, and then you I turn your back on them. People. You turn this your back dumb. on them. You just say, you just say nice chatting to you. Let's exchange LinkedIn. So you then have the LinkedIn contact to say bye. Yeah, there you go. It's an er early solution. Okay, but really, Ivan, the question I was asking you was when you decide that the candidate, you're not going to place this candidate. Well, how do you sign, turn off the person? Just I, I, at the moment, I have no fitting roles, but it might change next week. So that's, oh, so uh, you never that's... called up like Rich and said, I'm working on a good job that you might be interested in. You don't do that to start but off. You're not, but you're not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm pushing this too far. These guys are, you know, evading me. Does anybody else have uh, something they want to talk about? Anybody? No? No? It's all, it's all me. Okay. <laughs> all me it's all me it's all me okay does anybody ask this question it's a sort of standard but i never ask it what work accomplishment are you most proud of does anybody ask that no. silence crickets no. nobody asks that question other people sales do. ask about some of their bigger bigger deals and bigger wins but you know similar similar question i suppose how do you confirm that a sales rep has met quota or exceeded quota when they say they have? Um, you just walk through some of the numbers. You ask them about the deals they've won, like how many deals was that? What's an average deal size? You know, you just do quick math. And it's amazing how many times it doesn't add up. 
<laughs> oh really you're good at arithmetic uh, rich no i'm not but i can do math i mean <laughs> it's like you know give me round numbers hundred so the difference between so. math and arithmetic uh for me they mean pretty much the same they're the same i just said no i'm just it, i'm not good at math but it's it you know but it, it's round numbers quarters are a million bucks the guy's told me he sold three deals at 100 grand you know one deal at you know at, a, at 400 grand i'm like well you seem a little short then <laughs> you know on the quota you told me you blew out it's not uh <laughs> <laughs> okay so, you know i got more questions but i'm getting tired gonna we're, we're getting close to the pay. end <laughs> ernie you came late is there anything you want to say before we uh sign off no 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 I, i'm fine i just joined in i oh, wanted yeah. to laugh <laughs> we didn't, our, uh, food industry recruiter extraordinaire but food industry <laughs> recruiter.com that's ernie marino raise your hand ernie so everyone knows he's He's wearing a white shirt. I don't know what happened. Yeah, to him, he, okay? his purple one is gone. He wears black that turns purple. Now we're gray. Number mm -hmm. eleven, Rich Rosen. He's number eleven on the Forbes best recruiting company yeah. in America and the highest rated solo recruiter, CornerstoneSearch.com, MarioTheRecruiter.com. Raise your <clears> hand. Uh, in the background is Ivan Gulenko, Clang.so, and David M. Marr. Uh, and that's it, everybody. Thanks. I had a lot of fun. See bye you bye. later. Bye-bye.